Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we are reviewing our summer transfer activity and we're also playing our first game of the season against Manchester United. But let's move straight to the ins and outs. It wasn't a major squad overhaul like you will have seen the past couple of seasons. There hasn't really been too many signings for the first team squad in terms of this guy is definitely going to be part of my first eleven. Um, it was a lot more about strengthening just the depth of the squad and hopefully having some better options off the bench. Let's start with the outs. Alexander Isaac became third choice striker last season after Harlan joined the club. So he has left and joined Fulham for £44.5 million. Pounds. Now he's a good striker. And when Fulham came in, I did make some ridiculous demands like £60 million, And they started to negotiate, which ended up falling down to £44.5 million. And that was when they bought, uh, they bought him at. So, signed for 12 and a half. We've had him about a year and a half. He joined in the January transfer window of that season. So, uh, he's done okay for us. He didn't score that many goals. Um, he was definitely definitely a peripheral figure on the squad. And to get that much money from him 18 months down the line is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the benefits of playing in England, really. You can sign these players for quite cheap and sell them on for massive money if an English team is interested in buying. The next to leave was Callum Robinson who joined Huddersfield for £2.8 million. Pounds. He's a player you won't have seen much of. He's a winger and obviously when we joined the club we didn't play wingers. We play wing backs so he never really found himself getting any game time so we let him go for £2.8 million pounds as his contract was running out at the end of the season. Michael Verrips was our backup goalkeeper he is now sold for £350,000. He joined FC Groningen. Um, never made a... Did he make an appearance? Probably did in the cup. Maybe once or twice. There we are. One appearance. Um, but yeah. Just pointless, really. Next up, John Lundstrom. Never say much of him either. Central midfielder. Um, we did get some game time, particularly in the first season, I think, when we were struggling for numbers in the centre of midfield. And he was a decent enough box-to-box -box midfielder. He probably would have done a good job in the championship, but now he's gone and joined Philadelphia in the MLS. Kieran Freeman, another figure who played some good game time for us, actually, purely down to the amount of injuries we had at right wing back and left wing back. As you can see here in the 2020-2021 season, he actually made 30 appearances, 27 off the bench for three starts. So he did see some game time. And now he's went and joined Colorado Rapids in the MLS. Lise Mousset has left the club. I actually thought I would have got a bit more out of Lise Mousset. You know, a PSC striker joined from Bournemouth. Um, in our first season, he got 10 goals in 19 starts in the Premier League. So that wasn't too bad. But then we signed Esposito. We had Oliver McBurney. We ended up signing Isaac. And he just found himself falling further and further down the pecking order. And he has left on a free transfer to join the others in the MLS. We'll not talk about the loans because they're purely young players and some of them will have only just joined. So that brings us on to the ins, and the first of which is Eddie Nketiah from uh, Arsenal, an English striker who was going to be our fourth choice striker for this season. Two and star current, three star potential. The fact that he's English really, really did come in handy for squad registration. And he is he's coming as a fringe player and he's been more than happy to join us as a fringe player, which is the perfect um, thing to get when you sign an alone player, basically just to fill out the squad. Next to join was Femi Michael from Quara Academy. I believe he was in the Nigerian league. A two star current, four and a half star potential left winger. Of course, we don't play left wingers, but um, the fact that he was available on a free transfer and only demanded three grand per week, which is what is needed to get an under 23's work permit in the Premier League and my version of the game. And he's got some decent little stats uh, where they matter, particularly with his physicals. He'll, he'll go out and loan, try and give him some game time. We'll look to sell him for a few million a few years down the line. And that is purely why we're signing him. Next up is probably my most exciting signing of the summer. Barcelona B had Alex Mariba or listed for loan for two and listed for loan listed for transfer for two hundred and twenty five thousand pounds i mean look at him he's absolutely unbelievable wonder kid he's sitting in our under 23s at the minute purely because we've got too many central midfield options now i will be looking to get him long game time out for the rest of the season but next season i'm forcing this guy into my first team squad and he's going to get first team game time only two star current four and a half star potential not too many weaknesses which is nice to see uh, plenty of cons as well. Currently operating at a Skybet Championship level. We've had players in our first eleven operating at Skybet Championship level for, for a good couple of years. So the fact that 
he is already at that level 225k he's spanish he's part of that under 21 setup he's already classed as a wonder kid by the media i think this is probably my favorite signing of the summer next up willem Gobels from es monaco for 975,000 pounds a french striker 20 years old fantastic fantastically well-rounded he goes straight into the first team squad as our third choice striker basically replacing alexander isaac and he was transfer listed the fact for 975k for this sort of player two and a half stocker and five star potential still only 20 plenty of time to be able to improve those attributes i expect him to be able to make an effect on the first team squad even it might not be major at first but it will come over time next up was adria robust from uh, getafe for 1.2 million pounds and this is another guy who i definitely envision having a pathway into the first team squad he's already classed as a right wing back he's comfortable in that role it's already bright green so it's perfect exactly what we need for our sort of system physically he's just superb he's already there as an 18 year old mentally and technically he's got a lot of room to grow but maybe one or two seasons out getting first team football and i think he'll be ready he's definitely one who will come into the first team squad at some point stelios banitios from olympiacos for two and a half million pound is a young goalkeeper only 19 greek only got four star potential where usually i try and limit myself from signing four star potential signings generally just going for four and a half and above and that's not because stars uh gospel and they should be um pay attention to everything but if you start signing every four star potential signing you'll have about three thousand players coming into your squad so um he was listed as a four and a half star by me scouts but now he's coming into the squad he is listed as four star he still looks okay and still could develop into a very good goalkeeper our keepers in our squad at the minute only three star current ability three star potential so um, he could definitely improve our first team squad should he actually realise his potential. But we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Mark Hemmingson had some in not Mark Malte Hemmingson. He's a Danish striker. Had some interest from um, I believe it was PSG, but they didn't actually go in for an offer for him when we did. So two point eight million pounds secured his signature, and he looks absolutely fantastic at only eighteen years old. Twenty determination, physical as a die for. He's got some like aggression at seventeen. It's not something you usually see with a young um regen striker so getting this sort of player in is absolutely ideal i do anticipate him making the first team squad as well he's currently out on loan at atletico pamplona who's in the spanish second division if he can have a good season there we might be able to get him a loan game time at one of the top leagues and then after maybe two seasons he might find himself into the first team squad but he looks like a definite big one for the future um and then we've got three signings alongside william uh, guabels were definitely made with the first team in mind the first of which was pedrad rykovic it became available for only six million pounds which seemed like far too cheap of a deal to me he is pretty similar in terms of quality to jack butland in fact he's probably a little bit worse if we go to the attributes here jack butland has him in shot stop and distribution aerially physically and speed but mentally communication and eccentricity not exactly an ideal performance indicator for rykovic but yeah, he's going to provide some good competition and he's de a definite upgrade on uh, Michael Verips, who's left the club out, other backup goalkeeper. It might be a little bit difficult keeping them both happy in terms of game time, so that's going to have to be something I micro manage over the course of a season. But um, I'm happy to get him in the club for that price we paid. Next up was Marcus Antonio from Shakhtar. Now, this was a signing who I wasn't sure if I was going to do purely because of the signing of Mariba. Then I made the decision that I actually really want this guy in 20 million uh, 70 and a half million pounds from Shakhtar Donetsk um, he is a little bit too playmakery for my liking um, we've already got Danny Olmo who fits that role in the centre midfield and does it well so he can be back up to him but I more see him as challenging Renato Sanchez for that second spot as a box to box midfielder now he has some glaring errors in his game but particularly strength and his tackling for a box to box midfielder but I think over given time, he's still got a little bit of potential to grow. If we focus on those sort of things in training and try to get him more comfortable in the box-to-box -box midfielder role itself, I think he should be a good option and he's actually going to be starting today's game. So, um, welcome to Marcus Antonio. Next up, David Batella from Atlanta, an Italian centre-back for £20 million. Pounds, three and a half star current, four star potential. And just a very well-rounded centre-half. And probably comes in as, is he our best debatable but i think he's in the first 11 
Um, I think he probably replaces Bella Kochap or Tilo Kerra. And that was more than fine by me. The reason I signed him um, mainly was because Jérôme Montjean had a lot of offers from a lot of big clubs. But none of them really came in with £60 million, which was my bite point. If they'd offered £60 million, I would have sold them and just dealt with the ramifications after that. But I think the highest I ended up getting to any club was about 45 so I was not interested in that. So that's the main reason why Batella actually joined the club. But I'm happy to have him. You know, he's another top quality centre-back. And whilst that might push out one of our other first-choice centre-backs into a more um, second-choice role, doesn't matter. It improves our squad and improves our ability to be able to cope with the injuries, suspensions and general fitness issues that will come across over the course of a season. So when we're back with the squad in the 23rd of July, I constantly forget about Qatar 2022 when I'm playing football manager. Um, so our season, actually, when does it finish for the half well for the World Cup? It finishes in the end of October. So we've got quite a lot of games to get through between July and October to, uh, till we get to that World Cup stage. But um, interesting, interesting stuff. I, I panicked. You'll see from the signings that come in. I panicked a little bit. You see the date. This was deadline day. Marcus Antonio, Robust, Mariba and Nicotia all coming in on deadline day. And that was because I forgot all about the transfer deadline. Um, given another couple of, well, we would have had like maybe another month or so, not even that, a couple of weeks. Um, I probably would have spent a lot more of this 47 million improving the squad. But um, we've still got it there waiting for the January transfer window which will be, hopefully be a little bit more impactful than it was last season. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, after the transfers, that brings us to our first game in the Premier League for the season. We are struggling for numbers as a lot of our players are currently injured. Haaland's out, Oliver Norwood, Ben Osborne, Batella, our new signing, and Tilo Kerra. So two of our first choice centre-backs are out. So this is how we're going to line up. Jack Butland will start in goal. He will retain his place, at least for now, as our first choice goalkeeper. Bella Kotchap, Onjin and Bruno Amione are coming in the defender roles. Dodo returns from injury after last season's, what was it, like three-month injury. Luca Pellegrini at left wing back. Marcus Antonio does start today's game. Renato Sanchez on the bench, ready to come on should it be required. Danny Olmo uh, partnering him in the centre of midfield. Jean-Pierre is going to be in behind Goebbels and Esposito. How do you say Goebbels? Is it Goebbels? And we'll just go with Goebbels. So I do believe Manchester United ended up finishing either second or third last season. They've got a very, very strong squad. They signed a lot of actually Chelsea players, as you can see, Tamori in at the back, uh, Tammy Abraham as well. Got Zaniolo, who's just an absolutely superb Italian central midfielder. Um, so yeah, they've got an absolutely fantastic side. And if we were to even get a point out of this game, we've got to be at our very best. First highlight of the game, four minutes in, it's us that are in... No, nope, we are not in possession. We'll give the ball away to Max Ahrens. It's Manchester United who come forward with Zanny Olo finding Nathan Anke, who's playing at left-back for uh, Manchester United, which is interesting. He gets to the byline, then dispossessed by Dodo. Marcus Antonio switches the player to Luca Pellegrini. We've got a bit of space on this left-hand side. Manchester United committed down the other side, so we can definitely do some damage here, but Luca Pellegrini gives the ball away to Yuri Tillemans. And now Ever uh, Everton, Manchester United come forward with Everton down the left-hand side. Onjin kind of get the challenge in. Jack Butland with a save at his near post. That was uh, end to end stuff. Another highlight now, Luca Pellegrini once again driving at the Manchester United right-back. Max Ahrens, but he gets the challenge in once again. Oh my God, keeper. Oh, you just knew it was coming. You knew it was coming 20 yards out. Thankfully, thankfully, it's offside. Jack Butland and Bruno Amione as blushes are spared. I would have been raging, to be honest with you. Max Ahrens again causing us some issues down that right-hand side. Thankfully, we were able to cut out the pass before. it got the Tammy Abraham. Marcus Antonio driving forward now. We'll find John Pierre. It falls to Esposito. Esposito's first goal of the season. Our first goal of the campaign. And that was all Marcus Antonio driving through the middle of the park. Uh, going straight. Is that Zaniolo? It is Zaniolo. He goes straight past Zaniolo and finds John Pierre with a beautiful pass. To here with a decent save. Falls to Esposito. And 10 minutes in, we're 1-0 up. Another highlight now, 15 minutes in. We give the ball away by Luca Pellegrini. And Alex Iwobi can come down the right-hand side for Man United. Oh, no, that was a foul. Please say that wasn't in the box. He's given... Oh, free kick. I thought he'd given the penalty there. Thank God for that. 
Another highlight now, Dodo on the right-hand side for us in an advanced position. Finds Gobbles. Back to Dodo. Ball played in. Esposito was there and he hits the woodwork. 2-0 would have looked beautiful. Onjin with a big punt over the top. Nathan Akia is going to get there first. Is he going to make a mistake? No, he's not. Everton driving past Bella Kochap on that right-hand side. Finds Tammy Abraham in the box. And that was an excellent move by Manchester United. An excellent finish by Tammy Abraham. Ball punted over the top by David De Gea. Everton's all in space as Dodo had committed further forward. Bella Kochap comes out to try and get the challenge in. He finds Tammy Abraham in the box. A really good first-time finish. Jack Butland could maybe do a little bit better on his near post. But it was a decent strike. Power on it was a bit too much. 1-1. One, one. Another highlight now. Dodo switches the player to Luca Pellegrini. Plays the ball out of the edge. Dodo with the strike with his weak foot. Why? Jean-Pierre had the ball there. Why didn't he just take the strike? Danny Olmo with a corner. Plays a back post. Nathan Ake gets rid. And Tammy Abraham can bring it away from Man United. Everton. Please say that was offside. That was offside. No, it wasn't offside. But it goes out for a goal kick. So it doesn't matter. And there we have it. Manchester United won. Sheffield United won. Half time. A decent first half by us. I think both teams have had good opportunities to be able to put themselves in front. Neither of which have taken them. Um, the swing of play did sort of go towards Manchester United at the back end of the first half, but let's see how the second goes. Luca Pellegrini picks up a knock, and we will have to get Ender Stevens on in his role. That's one of the key areas where I wanted to improve in the summer was our backup options at wing back, but um, the options weren't there. Um, not for a reasonable fee anyway, so we're going to have to do with George Baldock and Ender Stevens for another season. Which isn't ideal. Tammy Abraham though is in behind. Jack Butland with a decent save. I think that was Dodo who cleared the ball and just gave it straight to a Manchester United player. Ender Stevens now on the ball. Tries to whip it in. It's cleared. Danny Olmo picks it up though. Finds Marcus Antonio. Jean-Pierre with a strike. First time strike. Seem a little bit overpowered on football manager. But I will take it all day. He was about 25 yards out. And a decent. That's a second. No it's not a second assist. But Marcus Antonio again heavily involved. In the build-up, same with Danny Olmo. Um, Antonio here, fine Jean-Pierre, first-time strike. Keeper can't do anything about that one. It was an absolutely beautiful clean strike. And we go to one up. We are going to go a bit more balanced for the rest of this game. Ten, ten minutes or so to go. We'll look to make our substitutes as well. Danny Olmo struggling in there. We can get rid of That's the nice thing about having better players. We can get Ronaldo Sanchez on for the last 12 minutes. We could not do that last season. It was always Norwood or John Fleck. Dodo with the ball. Finds Marcos Antonio. Finds Ronaldo Sanchez. And that's why you need the strength and depth. You get the good players coming on. It wasn't a big drop in quality from Dani Olmo to Ronaldo Sanchez. And they can come on and make a difference in the game with fresh legs. So with 10 minutes to go in this match. Marcos Antonio with another assist. Brilliant stuff. 3-1. Five minutes to go. Jean-Pierre with a free kick. De Gea can claim it. We will look to make our final substitute of the game. And it will be a typical one. George Baldock coming on for Dodo. Highlight now. Amionia finds Esposito. Ender Stevens is overlapping on that left-hand side. Back to Esposito. Back to Ender Stevens. Can we do something with this? Amionia. We're struggling here. We're going to give the ball away. You could just tell Tammy Abraham picks it up for Manchester United. Tailman sets away Evan. He's in behind. One-on-one -on -one with Jack Butland. Good save. Dodo can clear before Bruno Fernandes can get on the rebound. And time is ticking away now. We get four minutes of injury time. And that is going to be that. A big, big away win against one of our main rivals for European qualifications, Manchester United. Tammy Abraham equalised after a Sebastiano Esposito opener. But Jean-Pierre and Renato Sanchez give us the win. That great way to start. Compared to last season, perfect way to start the season. And now we have it. There's the league table. After the first game, we currently sit in second behind Everton. Obviously, it doesn't really mean much, but it's nice to see it anyway. Looking forward to the next episode. It will be our first game of our Europa League campaign against whoever that ends up being and Arsenal at home in the Premier League. So good, good chunk of games in between. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.